Hi, this is Jeff from the Ozark Mountains. That's in Missouri, in the USA. Well, we're not sitting at the workbench today, so you know what that means. That's right, it's time for another Ferengi Friday. Ferengi Friday is where we take a look at all the recent acquisitions that have recently made their way into the shop. Remember, the 64th rule of acquisition clearly states that vintage computers are always a wise investment. Well, grab yourself a cup of coffee or some snail juice and let's jump right in. This video is brought to you by PCBWay. It's easy to jump on their website and get your quick quote for your next circuit board. They also offer CNC services, 3D printing, enclosure making, everything you need for a complete product. They also do surface mount and through hole assembly, stencils, and a range of other products and services. If you need advanced circuit boards like flex boards, microwave boards, that type of thing, they got you covered there too. Whatever your PCB or prototyping needs, PCBWay has you covered. As a bit of an aside, when I did the recent video on Retrobrite, the one subject I kind of glossed over was how the sun can both turn something yellow and turn it white through bleaching. And several people ask a question about that, and yeah, to be fair, I didn't really cover it in any detail in the video. And then I remembered I had this block of natural ABS. It's been hanging around for, oh, nine years now. And I thought that might be a good opportunity to cut some coupons from it and maybe we can set these outside, you know, a couple of them in a little glass house and a couple just sitting out in the sun and see what the difference is. See how long it takes a couple to yellow and see what happens to the other two that aren't yellowed already. Um, so what do you think? Is that something you'd like to see that experiment? Just let me know in the comment section down below and I'll get that set up. It might take a few months to get the results we need uh, just using the sun, but it should be fun. This little guy is a Tandy portable disk drive too. This was a later accessory that was available for the Tandy Model 100s and 102s, the WP2. They also work on the uh, NEC 8201, 8300, those types of slab top computers, which were made by Kyocera. At any rate, I bought this from the original owner who in the course of using it one day, accidentally knocked it off the table and it quit working. And so he made me a good deal on it, and I told him I would let him know what I found that was wrong with it. And other than a little crack in this area, and the front's kind of splayed out, uh, physically it's in pretty good shape, so I think it'll clean up well. And I thought this might make a good uh, quick video about what to look for when you get something that's been banged around like this. So look for that coming up in the future. Here we have a couple power centers. You might remember these from back in the day where you could set your monitor on top of here and you know have a master power switch and turn on your monitor, turn on your computer, yada yada. And they always had some sort of you know semi-crappy built-in surge suppression. Um, but I found these at a Goodwill in a close by town for a whopping $3 a piece. And other than this one turning a little yellow on the bottom side here, they're in good shape. I think they'll clean up well when I'm finally able to set up multiple systems at a time in the new computer room, I think these will come in really handy. Now this package actually is more than a month old and I was so wrapped up in doing other things I didn't have time to do this Ferengi Friday video until now and it took me a while to even remember what this is. But I think I have figured it out. Let's see if we can safely open it up here. Try not to cut too far through the paper. Okay, oh yeah, look at that. Oh. Not a blemish on the case. A few little scuff marks on the bottom, some upside down writing. And look at that. Wow. 
everything still in the bag. That is the cable to hook your cassette up. This is the CE122. This just has a little dot matrix printer. It always has the place to, there's a little cover that goes on the calculator where it plugs in here and they give you a place to store the cover even. And a little bit of a button there. I wonder what that's for. It's never been out of the bag. What do you say? Okay. CE122 printer and cassette interface rating 4.8 volts DC. So I guess the only thing it didn't come with was the power adapter. Oh, this one doesn't have the uh, bus pass through. Some of these had a pass through so you could plug in a second device to the back. This is where the paper goes. And put the little ribbon in there. That's the same type of ribbon um, that looks like that the Epson HX20 uses. Very, very similar at least. So maybe we'll get lucky and it'll be the same ribbon because I have several of those now. Very, very neat. So now I'll have to pull out the correct sharp computer that works with this guy and give it a try. It's such a treat to be able to find something that was new in box like this just so you can see what it was like if you would have bought it back in the day. Now back when this was new I would have been a young teenager and couldn't have afforded it. So it's rather exciting to be able to see it now. Go ahead and slip him back in the bag there. The cables in there. I imagine you can store some extra paper in there. This doesn't really look like it had been big enough for the power adapter though, which is kind of interesting. Oh, you know what? I bet that you took the power adapter that came with the computer and plugged into here and then this powered the computer. Yep, I bet that was it. Okay. Let's see what's in the next box. As I was cleaning up, I found this. It is a little fill it out yourself name label to go on the back of the printer interface. Nifty. Definitely make sure we put that back in the box. There we go. How nifty. Now, for the life of me, I don't remember what is in this box. I think it is an old calculator or two, but it's a rather big box for that. It was from a small auction company who also ships. But it has been so long ago, uh, the 28th of May. I just don't remember. Oh no. Oh, I completely forgot about these. Woohoo! Yes, yes, yes. Oh, now I'm super duper excited. New old stock Wiko command control joysticks. How freaking awesome is that? These boxes are excellent. Let's get them all out of here and take a look. Okay, let's start with this Epix 500XJ bike. Conix, the world's first high-performance joystick. Fully equipped with a five-year, 10 million shot warranty. Okay, how do you think they're going to keep track of how many shots you've had? Tactile response micro switches. Molded cable strain relief. Unbreakable solid steel shaft. These unique switches let you hear and feel the exact position of the joystick. The only joystick that actually fits in your hand for a more comfortable, more natural feel. The fire button is angled. Okay, how do we open it up here? All right, I do so carefully. There we go. 
and yeah so it's designed I guess for right-handed people because you hold it like so oh yeah listen to all those clicky switches now yeah, that's not too bad and oh yeah so wrap your index finger there it's even got a recess spot here for your middle finger oh. short throw that's a completely different experience than the Wico command control yeah that's rather ergonomic -y. Oh, it's even got a recess there for your thumb. Somebody was thinking. I wonder if they made a left-handed version. Very, very interesting. I'll have to try that out. Might take a while to get used to that index finger fire button. It's kind of different. But otherwise, it looks very well made. Nice thick cable, good strain relief, thick plastic, couple screws holding everything together, and actual micro switches, not little domes on a circuit board. Very cool. Okay, let's look at the command controls now. Okay, here's our command control, originally from Albertson, so I can't read the original price. Shows all the compatibilities with various adapters. Exclusive Wico features. Extra long five foot cord. Yeah. These things are really built like a tank. Actual documentation, warranty card, and all the other things they make. Deluxe joystick, famous red ball joystick, command control adapters, track balls. Very nifty. This doesn't look like it's been used. The feet aren't scuffed up. There's no scuffing on the body of it. Cord is still all curly. Oh yeah. The centering bushing feels nice. Oh yeah. Strain relief is still in good shape. Yep cords in good shape but all that goes wrong on these is the rubber centering bushing which is inside of here but you can get those uh, newly made and they work great uh, I'll put a link to a video I did a couple years ago on refurbishing these joysticks so about the only thing I had problems with with the, my ones from my youth was replacing the centering bushing replacing the strain relief here which had broken and then adjusting the switches and getting those just right Oh yeah, feels like old times. Really awesome. Okay, I think we're gonna have to set up the Commodore 64 and try out these joysticks. I think that's required by law. So, our last and largest box here was listed on eBay as 23 pounds of Convergent Work Slate accessories. And it's another one of those deals where the shipping was kind of high, but the price of the, the box of stuff wasn't too bad. So I contacted the seller and said, hey, how about if I send you a prepaid shipping label and you ship it to me? And he was okay with that. So that worked out really well. Now, a few years ago, I worked on a couple of work slates that a friend gave me. Um, they're an interesting little slap top computer that was an odd choice for Convergent to make because they made big high-powered workstations. Uh, 
I wasn't entirely successful on them. I could never get the cassette decks working, even though I machined some little tiny parts to, to fix them. And it fixed them physically, but there's still something wrong there. At any rate, I thought this was worth a, a go just to see what all was in here. Because the pictures weren't that great, actually, online in the listing. Uh, he didn't mess with any superfluous packing material. Oh my gosh, look at this. These are all plotter pins. The work slate uses the same ALPS mechanism that Atari used and Commodore used and Sharp used and everybody else in the world used. There's two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, New sets of pins. Maybe there was 50 in there originally. Yeah, there could have been. Very awesome. Well, I've got more of these pins than I will ever use now. Oh, there is a date. March 16th, 1984. Wow, okay. The new old stock work slate NICAD battery. This slotted in, or you could use double A's. It has the contacts there. I'm sure that these cells have given up the ghost, but it's kind of neat having that in the original blister pack. Tell you what, I'm going to empty everything out of this box and we'll just look at it on the tabletop. I think that'll be easier. Okay, now let's see if we can make some sense of all this. There are about a hundred rolls of printer paper in the box. This is just one of them. Uh, as mentioned, the work slate printer used the same ops mechanism as the Commodore 1520, etc. It's a little wider carriage though, so this paper is a little wider. I'm not sure what else will use this, but I've got more, much, much more than a lifetime's uh, amount of paper here. This is the slip cover for the printer, I think. This is about the size of the printer. Still taped up in the package. And we've got... Um, got some new cassettes. These actually say Teach Me Now, so these are preloaded program cassettes. I'll teach me later. These were the uh, cassettes that came with a new work slate that had some tutorials on it. That's what those are. And this was a blank tape that you bought. And there's a whole box of these in here, actually. Still in the plastic packaging. The work slate uses micro cassettes, but it has a stereo head on it. So not only can you flip the tape over, you've got an A and B, but it has two tracks per side. And it's not clear to me how those tracks are used. And in the limited documentation, it doesn't really say. It had the ability to work as an answering machine and a, a dictation machine. So maybe it's using one track for voice and one track for data. I'm not really sure how that works. It's rather curious. And then there's a whole pile of these uh, boxes of software, which comes with the micro cassette. This one's for estate planning, a little booklet, and a nice hard case. So there's estate planning, inventory analysis, sales reporter, Electronic Information Systems. Oh, Dow Jones, The Source, CompuServe, etc. 1983 Business Tax. That's useful. Time and Project Management. Travel. Loan Analysis. So they're obviously... Had, you know, intended to market this thing to the business user. 
financial statements, cash management, portfolio analysis. Wow, this looks like everything they ever made. Uh, meeting management. Another 1983 personal tax. Consultant. Time planning, expense reporting, accounts receivable. And another estate planning. How interesting. It's kind of neat to see them in their original packaging like that. And the last bit of software related stuff was this. There's another one of those plastic things in here and some books. And this thing marked 10 pieces. I think this is more cassettes. About one very worn out rubber band. Yeah, some of the little booklets, sales reporter. And I think this is two more blank tapes. Oh yeah. Let's see if they are indeed blank. Yes. Oh no, this is real estate tape two. Real estate tape one. Financial statements tape one. Financial statements tape two. Travel. Huh. So maybe you could get everything in the hard cases like that or just in a big box. Consultant. Oh, interesting. That's kind of curious, isn't it? I didn't expect that. And then we have this. Another box marked 10 pieces, but it has a different part number on it. Another battery. And the power brick. And some cords. All the cords on the work slate have some weird clear coat that turns to goo. It's like they put something on there to make it shiny. And it just makes a mess. It takes forever to clean that stuff off of there. What a mess. Here's another NICAD battery pack. And you can see this one's starting to leak. It's not too bad. Um, Here's another, and you can start seeing it getting crusty. But having these caps is kind of interesting. It means it might be possible to pop these apart and replace them with nickel metal hydride cells. There's enough of them there to experiment with. And this is the original power brick. These are really nothing special. Uh, I took one apart and fixed it for a friend. And it is just basically a transformer with a rectifier and capacitor in a little box. A pretty cheap and cheerful power supply. And let's see what this is 10 pieces of. More cassettes maybe? Oh yeah, more cassettes. What are these? Oh, these do look like blanks, but they don't have the little plastic cases on them. These are just tin blank cassettes. Well, I've got enough blank cassettes to last me forever. Um, as far as other cables, there's a selection of other cables, and they all have this coding issue. Uh, the works light used a serial interface to all the accessories which used a telephone type connector. And there's some curly cords like that. All of them are going to have to be cleaned up. I might just leave these ones that are in the package in the package just for the heck of it. And there was a retail package of printer paper, four rolls, and a blister pack. And see, this has been in, a, in the sun. It's yellowed the outer plastic as well as the paper, it looks like. So I wonder if this was on a store shelf. You know, it doesn't look like it's been hanging up though. So it's kind of curious how it was exposed to the sun on both sides like that. But I am not hurting for paper right now. You know, but this would still work. You can peel off the outside few rows and it'll still work just fine. Okay. These are all plotter pins. None of these is full. So there's like 20 to 30 sets in each box. Some are all black, like some are colored, kind of mixed in there. 
It was hard to tell from the, the photo on the listing, but it looked like there was a lot of these in there, but he didn't really specify. So just getting all these pins is a big bonus because they're not inexpensive for a single set. And there was a retail package like this, which are all black pins. So all together, there are four of the NICAD battery packs, but of course these are all corroding. This one's actually bulging here, so... Uh, I'm, someday I may try to figure out how to pop these apart and replace the cells. It looks like... Uh, I don't know how these caps are held on. This is just battery shrink wrap. So maybe these caps are just glued into place. Um, so I'll have to see. That might be an interesting project to try to work out. And the last thing we have here is this box, which says it's the Comport accessory. Well, this was kind of setting like back to the side in the pictures on the listing. So I wasn't exactly sure what was in the box, if it was an empty box. Um, this box has never been opened, actually. It's got a little ding right there. This hooks up with one of those telephone type cords to the work slate. And you can network to other work slates through here, or connect to a, a printer, a serial printer, parallel printer, that type of thing. Let's see if we can get this guy open. Oh, goodness gracious, that was way too much effort. Got some squeaky styrofoam in there. Look at that. Genius. They molded top in there so you don't open it up upside down. They were thinking of me. Well, it's got some tape on it. Oh, look at that. The manual's still in the shrink wrap. See, even the, the cord here, it's got that shiny stuff on it, turned to goo. And the shrink-wrapped interface, the WC100. Oh my gosh, that is a tight, tight fit. I wonder if I'll be able to get that back in there. First time this has been out of the box since the early 1980s. Got these Hujungus dip switches in here, and they even put a little table of how to set them there. Serial port, parallel port, pretty freaking slick, I think. It's amazing that some of this stuff is still around that's never been opened before. Okay, I think we're going to have to set up a Commodore 64 now and try out those joysticks. What do you think? Okay, I've got my daily driver 64C set up here, uh, basically bone stock with a Epix fast load cart and SD to IEC, and that funky little Epix 500XJ joystick. I've got a game called Shadow Switcher uh, loaded up here. This came out just a few years ago, and it is a whole lot of fun. And you basically just use the fire button to swap players on the screen so it's not as demanding to get used to this funny fire button arrangement here. Let's see how it goes. Press fire. One player. And I haven't played this in so long I kind of forget the pattern I had all worked out. Wow. It does not take very long to move with this guy. See now I'll switch players. Gotta avoid the lightning, which I just didn't do, and I got zapped. Let's try it again. And I remember I went up and got this guy. Ah! I've always had trouble with the lightning. I think I've got it now. Okay. I've gotta start moving while the lightning is still going. There we go. This is the pattern. Like that. 
lock that gate. Go up there. I'll just kind of hang out here and fall down. And it's done. Woohoo! Yeah, this is kind of an interesting little joystick. I'm so used to the Epic's command control and it's much longer movement that this has taken a while to get used to, but it works well. Whoa, Nelly. Let's get around that guy there. Get the other key through the two gates and out. These first levels, once you get the pattern down, the I want to stay there. You don't need to switch as much or trade places with your shadow. Well, hell, I'm in a bad spot here. Yeah, okay. I kind of like this joystick. It's nice. It's got nice clicky buttons. Well, thanks for joining me and having a look at these boxes, which I kind of forgot what was in some of them. It was a lot of fun to look through there. It was just like Christmas. Oh, I forgot one thing. You guys remember the shirt that I had made up a few months ago and set up on Teespring with the artwork my brother did? Well, somebody asked me to set up some red shirts, which I did. And while I was on there, I saw something that blew my mind. It was just so ridiculous. Yeah. Print in socks. Yes, you can actually get socks printed up. And it's just so ridiculous, I had to do it, of course. So I bought a pair of socks. I sent one to my brother. So now if you have the burning desire, you can not only get your Haybert t-shirt, you can get your Haybert socks. And who doesn't want Haybert socks? Anyhow, uh, here's the URL, and I'll put it in the description down below, just in case. That box of work slate stuff was certainly an interesting find and kind of exciting because I really didn't know what I was going to be in there. And just all of those plotter pins, well, that was probably worth the price of the whole box just right there by itself. And, you know, what am I going to do with 100 rolls of paper? So if you need any plotter paper that's about, you know, yay wide, get in touch. Oh, and be sure to let me know what you think about doing that experiment where we try to yellow the natural ABS plastic and, you know, have some that's on the outside, have some that's in like a little glass house so we can see what the sun does through the glass and outside of the glass. Let me know about that. That might be a fun experiment to do. If you have any questions or comments, well, you know what to do. Just leave them in the comment section right down there. I'd be glad to hear from you. I do my best to keep up with the comments. The, the YouTube comment thing doesn't work all that well sometimes, especially when there's a lot of comments. Uh, it can be kind of hard to find them when they come in and reply to, but I do my best and I sure appreciate hearing from you. And as always, I'd like to take a moment to say thanks to my patrons and the folks who support the channel through other means. You're really what keep this channel going. I couldn't do it without you and your support is greatly appreciated. If you'd like to find out some more information about that, well, just look in the description down below. There's some links there where you can find out more information. Well, that'll wrap it up for this time. And until next time, bye and thanks.